Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Roxanne Speed with Enjoying Everyday Life Supernaturally. I'm gonna give you guys easy, practical strategies that you can apply to your daily life where you too will see the victory and become a super spiritual ninja. All right guys, if you like the content, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for everyone who has commented and encouraged y'all rock. Don't forget to subscribe, please, please, please. I wanna make that thousand. I wanna reach the world, guys. Forget the thousand, millions. So please support me and be a part of that. Get, um, if you wanna see more content, just hit the little notification bell and you'll know when I put more out. And please, the biggest thing, do not forget to do this. As I always say, share, share, share. Why? Because Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. All right, everybody. The weapons of our warfare what we fight with, what we protect our children with, our mind with, what we battle, every sickness and disease that comes against us is not carnal. We know what carnal means. It's fleshly, it's tangible, right? No, but the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they're mighty in God. In who? In God. They're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. And strongholds are anything that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. It can be thoughts, belief systems. It can be sickness. It can be an enemy, a spirit that is oppressing you. It cannot stay. So you have to bring it into obedience through your thoughts, through your actions, into the obedience of Christ Jesus. And that's how you will see the victory. Well, how do we do that? Pretty easy, right? Okay. God left us with equipment. He left us with armor. And we are to put it on every day, you guys. Every day, you have to remind yourself, I have to put the armor of God on. Because when you walk outside, you're naked, right? Okay, common sense. No one is going to walk outside forgetting to put their bra on, ladies, or their underwear on, or your shirt. No. Because for one, you'll go to jail. For two, it's embarrassing. For three, you're vulnerable to the cold, to the heat, to bugs. Same thing. Why are we so silly to think that our spirits and our minds, guys, our soul, our emotions, our wills are not under the same attack, are not as vulnerable? Guys, it's more so with our spirit. So thank God that God left us armor to fight our battles. Number one, every morning when you wake up, you're going to put on the helmet of salvation, right? What does the helmet do, guys? It protects your head. Well, what's about your head? It's the, the leader. It's where you think. It's where you process. It's the command center, right? It's where your salvation is processed. And then everything else comes off that, right? So the helmet of salvation, why do we do that? Because we are telling ourselves, reminding ourselves, other people and the devil, that we are saved. We are sanctified. We are redeemed. We are set free. And we will see the victory, guys, right? So your helmet of salvation, that's number one. Put it on in the morning. I always tell myself, Lord, I thank you, God, that you are good, that I'm a daughter of God, that you are my El Shaddai, my God more than enough. I thank you that you have equipped me with everything I need to live on this earth for life and godliness. I thank you that you are for me and not against me. I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you caused me to triumph in every situation, right? Come on, guys. you got to stir yourself up. All right, number two, your second armor or your artillery or whatever you want to do, your, your weapon you're going to bring out. So after you put your helmet on, you're going to put on what? your breastplate of righteousness. You're gonna put it on because you're gonna cover what? Your heart and you're gonna cover your back so you can't be ambushed from the back. And you need your heart, you need your chest protected. You don't want the wind knocked out of you, right? You don't wanna get stabbed in, in the area, in the core of who you are. So you put on your what? Your breastplate of righteousness. To what? To extinguish every fiery dart of the enemy. So they're gonna fly at you because we know the Bible says that weapons form against us, but no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's the key. So what is your, what is your breastplate of righteousness going to do? What are you going to do when you're standing there holding it, right? You are going to put it on telling yourself that the core of who I am is righteous, redeemed. Again, 
I am loved. I am the apple of God's eye. I am an heir with God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, all right? Number three, all right? We have the what? Sword of the Spirit, guys. That is literally a sword. We know the Bible says that the Word of God is like a two-edged sword. It's twofold. It kills your enemy and it keeps you safe. It slices through something and it gives you something back. So, the sword of the Spirit. Are we just going to pick it up and hold it? No, guys. We are going to wield that sword like a ninja. Just like you're fighting someone back in the day when they had those sword fights, you got to get skilled because your enemy is more knowledgeable. He's cunning and he knows. He's been doing this for years and years and years. Where to get you, where to hit you where you're weakest, where to cause the most grief, and he is good at it. But we are not to be ignorant of his attacks, no. So when you got that sword in your hand, you know how you wield it? With the word of God. That's what it is. You're going to speak out over that sickness. By his stripes, I am healed. No weapons formed against me shall prosper. My God has provided all my needs according to his riches and glory, right? I'm wielding that sword, you guys, and it's chopping the enemy. And as it's doing that, they're getting less. They're scattering. And I am protected, right? Okay. What else? You're gripping that sword. What else are you going to tell yourself? The battle is not mine, right? When I am weak, when I'm getting tired, that's okay. I can rest in that because that's when he comes along and he sends angels to fight for me, right? He sends angels to take a break, step back. He says, you've called on me because I dwell under the secret place of the most high where the shadow, where there no foe can withstand. I will call on the Lord, right? So he's got a legion of angels. Guys, use those angels as well. He sends his angels and gives charge over you to keep and protect you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. But you got to call him. You got to command him. You have to give them authority. You have to give them access. And you have to give them something to do. And they want to war for you. They want to minister to you. And they want to protect you. Look it up, guys. It's all in there. All right. The next one is what? Belt of truth. Well, why do we put on a belt? So our pants won't fall down. Maybe it completes our outfit, right? Well, what is truth? When you're strapping that belt on a truth in the morning, you want to say, truth is that by his stripes, I am healed. If you say the same scripture over and over again, it's okay. It is okay. It's actually good because you're getting it in your mind. You're embedding it. You're meditating on it where it's going to become one with you. That's what Jesus said. He said, abide in me and I in you. And my words remain in you. I will come and I will dwell with you. And as I am one with the Father, we will be one, right? Oh yeah. Okay, what else about that truth? God is a way maker, a miracle worker. Okay, I don't see a way out right now. I don't see anything. It looks bleak, God. It looks desolate. The enemy's coming at me one way, but you've risen a standard against him. And the enemies I see now are going to scatter seven ways before me. You hedge me in on every side, God. You've gone before me and you prepared the way. You make ways in the wilderness and rivers and streams in the desert. You make things out of nothing. You spoke this and it became. You said that and it was. So maybe I don't see a way, but I'm going to take my hands off. I'm going to let that belt be strapped firmly around my waist. And I'm going to say, I'm going to stand back until I see the salvation of the Lord. Until I see him deliver us out of this affliction. And guys, he will because he's faithful. And his word does not return to him void. But it goes out to accomplish his will and purpose. All right, guys. Next one. What is it? We're going to shod our feet with peace, shoes of peace, right? What do your feet do? Well, for one, our feet are very, very sensitive. When we walk, there's nerve endings so we can feel things. We can just, they're experiencing sensations in them. So we want to protect them from that. Our nerves, our feelings, our emotions, right? Also, we got to get places, right? So we want to have that in peace. We want to have our life and everything going around, all the motives, all the, the, the intentions of people, guys, we don't want to walk into that blindly. So we're going to have discernment with our peace, with our shoes shotted with peace. That gives us an advantage, right? Because we can't fight barefooted. So it says, as I walk into this problem, or I'm coming at this legal battle, and it's all hell's breaking against me, and they have destroyed your name, 
you are going to say, I can stand here because justice is the Lord. He says, vengeance is not yours, but mine. Jesus said the reason he didn't offend himself, the reason he didn't have to speak up is because he knew the Lord would right the wrongs. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's cancer. And you just heard it's returned. Well, nope, because peace tells you to be anxious for no thing, right? As you're walking about, you're leaving that doctor's office, got your, sh your shoes of peace on, you're going to say, no, I'm not going to be anxious or fret or have fear, anxiety over anything. But no, I'm going to pray and with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, knowing he's already done it, I'm going to make my request known to my God. And he will give me peace that surpass all understanding. I'm going to walk around broke, just had a bad rapport. Maybe just got my kids taken away. I don't know what it is. Whatever trial is coming against you. But it's not to stay. That storm has to pass. And God is going to use it for his glory, guys. We have to remember a lot of the times it's a test and he wants you to pass. He wants you to grow strength from that trial. He wants to show the devil and the world that my people are not weak. My people don't serve me because of their robots. They have free will and they still, like Job, though he slay me, I will serve him, right? I will praise him. Guys, sometimes... God will let it get to the 11th hour. He will let it look like you're down, you're out. They think, okay, we won. The enemy's like, oh my gosh, I got her, I got him. And then we bounce back, right? Get your bounce back. That's what those shoes of peace are for. All right. So guys, I'm going to leave you with that today. I'm going to leave you with that, that every morning, you guys are going to rise up after you get out of bed, get your coffee, whatever you do, read your Bible, and put on your armor. And then guys, this is the last little key, the golden piece, the icing on the cake. Having done all that the crisis demands, you stand. You stand on the word of God. You stand on the goodness of your God. You stand knowing that everything you've prayed, everything you've dressed in, all the armor, it's been given to you by your God who loves you, who is for you, who sent his son to die for you. Who can be against God's elect when God be for you? Who? Jesus? Who laid himself down for you? Who? God? No. He chose to, to let his son take our place. No one, nothing can come against the power of God in your life. And you are chosen. You are a chosen generation. You are royalty. You are going to live and not die. You are going to declare forth the glory of our God. God says right now that there's somebody watching. Actually, you've just been diagnosed with something or it's come back. You've been diagnosed again and you see nothing but death. You're like, God, I can't handle this. Maybe you're in a panic attack. Maybe you can't breathe and you're just overwhelmed and you don't want to see anybody. You don't want to go home yet. And you cannot even think you're in terror. God says, no. He says, no. He says, because perfect love casts out all fear and I love you. And that disease, that illness, that sickness, it will not take you out right now. In Jesus' name, I command that sickness to leave that very body. And God, you know who they are. God says that you will stand, you will remain, and I will change the trajectory of your life as long as you promise to give me glory. I'm going to heal you, but glorify my name to everyone you see and watch if I don't show up and show out, you are healed, says the Father. Speak it. Think it. You have the victory for my glory. Okay, God, there's somebody watching right now. You just had a tragic accident. You lost a loved one. And you are traumatized. You're angry at God. You don't understand. You felt like when you were at the very lowest moment, when you were hanging on like a thread, you said, God, I can't take anymore. One more thing hits you. And this was the hardest hit in a while. God says, this has not come on you to kill you. Just like when Jesus waited four days after Mary and Martha told them that Lazarus had died and they waited. He said, I came after he was stinking, after he had been sitting in those grave clothes and there was no chance he could be alive on his own accord, right? Why? 
so that the glory of God would be even more revealed and the power of God would change us. Okay, guys, my daughter's calling, so I'm going to go. Y'all heard her. Sorry about that. All right, guys, if you like that content, please apply it to your life first off. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and share, share, share. I love you guys. Take care. See you next time.